Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session of Strong at Home. I'm Dr. Brenda Murphy. I'm an educational psychologist with Sail Away Learning and Academy, and we are delighted to bring you series of information to help parents with children to be strong at home, no matter what environment or situation that you find yourselves in. Doctor, I mean, Dr., I'm giving you a new title, Carol. Let me just bring you up here. Um, in our um, in our screen. Hello, this is Carol Slattis, everyone, and she is a school counselor, a senior school counselor at Farragut Intermediate School. And we're going to be talking about for several sessions here at Strong at Home, bridging the home to school divide between parents and children. And what that really is, is we're trying to create a bridge. And the first thing that we want to talk about is that we are still about minimum six to eight weeks away from school year 2021 starting. It is going to be like no other year that we've ever had that I'm aware of, <laughs> to say the least. And there have been conversations of how do we survive from, from March to June, which we've passed now and we have done. <laughs> But Carol, we are talking about those school bells are going to be ringing soon. And I am personally concerned with the transition from kind of crisis mode, which everyone was hunkered down. What do we do in the immediate making instantaneous decisions, really, and trying to make something unexpected work? to preparing for the new year. And I don't think it's too early for us to think about that. So as a school counselor, what are some of the things that you can share with us that will help parents and students make the smoothest transition back into the new school year? And thank you for being here. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me here. Um, I think the biggest thing, I, I agree with you that I don't think it's too early to start thinking about it and to start having those important conversations with our kids and to understand that we don't necessarily know exactly what it's going to look like. I think it's an ever changing um, situation and that the school systems are trying to make the best decisions that they can throughout this process. But I think the biggest thing is to prepare for lots of different possibilities and to be open and flexible with things changing unexpectedly. Yeah, I, you work for the Knox County school system with them. And a week or so ago, they put out what their plans are. And what I found interesting and really speaks to the importance of being flexible is they've put out three scenarios. Yep. Correct? And so we really don't know which one is going to occur. And we may start with one. I think they're saying you may start with one, but have to transition to another very quickly. Right. And so I, I feel I'm really thankful. I think that our county is addressing that and is starting to get people thinking about what it could possibly be, but understanding that it could shift and that could change. So, so we need to be prepared for that. So one of the main skills or the main ideas that you mentioned briefly was flexibility and we are saying that parents can think about and prepare themselves to think flexibly, if that, yeah, flexibly. And we can also prepare students and their children. So how would we want to get started with that? What would you say would be the first thing that we would want to think about as a parent working with a child and working with the school to think about to develop a sense and a stance really of flexibility. I think the biggest thing is to really focus on what is really in your control. So, so thinking about the situation and there's going to be some decisions that are not in your control that's being made from above. And so then you say, in this scenario, what is it I can control? And so when we think about anxiety or worries or fear or stuff, there's a direct relate or an inverse relationship, actually, a complete inverse relationship between anxiety and being prepared. So when we're prepared, 
that should decrease our anxiety. So in order to be prepared, you have to think about what can I control? So think about the different scenarios that are being presented. So for Knox County, we have kind of three scenarios. Should we be completely online? Would it be a combination of being in school and out of school? Or are we solely in school? So take a look at those three things. And then within that, say, what is it that I can control about this? What are the things I need to put in place if this were to happen? So um, I talk a lot about with students, I talk about the what ifs. So if you just keep on saying, and then, and then, or what if that happened? And then what if this happened? And just keep on saying that until you have a pretty definite plan in place that can be really helpful, can, can definitely decrease anxiety. Right. And in planning, you've given us a graphic. Um, you've given us a great amount of information to think about. And we won't be covering everything in our session today. So I want our, our viewers to know that what we're going to share here today is just kind of a taste. And we will have resources up that will follow up and expand on Carol's ideas about how you can approach and develop a flexible thinking patterns about what you're going, what's going to be happening in the school situation. And she developed a couple of graphics that we're going to share here today. And this was one of them because you were talking about the things that you can control and the things that matter. Mm -hmm. So can you speak about how a, a parent might utilize this kind of in, in, education needs. This is a Venn diagram, y'all. <laughs> That's really the title of it. And a Venn diagram is where you put a lot of things in one circle and then other things that are important in the other. And you see where they overlap and how you might think about things in that overlapping. It helps you make decisions sometimes. So in part of the planning that we're talking about, why don't you explain to parents how they can more specifically use this Venn diagram that you have for us? Well, I like this one because you've we've seen a lot of people talking about the things that you can control, that that's really important because and sometimes in situations like this, you feel powerless. You feel like all this stuff is just happening to you. But in reality, there are several things that you are in control of your thoughts, your, your reactions to things are always in your control. But I like this diagram because it also talks about what matters. So when we sometimes we get bogged down a lot of times in things that when we really stop to think about it, does that really matter? Is that what is most important? So when it comes to school, you know, what is the most important thing is that our students are learning, that they're growing, that they're developing. And sometimes we want to make sure that we're not getting bogged down in all the little specific things that that exact little thing doesn't really matter. So when we take a look at what matters and what's in our control, you want to focus on what is both, you know, and that's what you what you want to make a plan for. Yeah. Can you can you give us like you did say that the things that matter are those things about learning and staying um, in the moment, being able to to engage in the learning activities and then there are some things that we can control and those things, can you give us some ideas how parents can help their children and themselves focus on things they can control? Because obviously if they're in school and they decide to go in school with some sort of a limited in-person scenario, and then all of a sudden something happens, the children have gotten used to that and all of a sudden they can no longer do that. So how, what are some things, if that should happen, they can control? I mean, we're really talking about an if then, aren't we? <laughs> right, if this then happens. I mean, one thing is um, I, I found has been really powerful and people um, have, have done well and has been helpful is having a schedule. You know, so if you're at home and or it's, you know, partially at home or something like that, creating some sort of schedule so that there's sense of order. Um, children thrive on structure. And so it's really important that we help provide that for them. So I think that's a big thing that we can try to control and try to make a plan for. Yeah, those things that will will come up. Do, do you want to maybe speak? We did talk about some of the if thens and in this sense that things that we're going to control, if this happens, we can control that. And that makes if then a positive um, 
conversation. Are there some other, is there another side to the if then conversation that maybe we want to also control in the sense that sometimes we think about an if that may have a not a positive outcome and many children and I think some adults often think about those situations and that may compromise what they're having control over. You know, I, I think if you're thinking about something that could happen that's not something you want to happen, instead of focusing on that, you could focus on what, you know, how to problem solve or what, how you can think of a situation differently to have a similar outcome for what matters. So like, I'm trying to think of an example. So, you know, socializing as a counselor, I deal a lot with students and their, their friendships and getting along. So people have been apart. So you're like, okay, I'm not able to see my friends. I'm not able to do this. So what is it that matters is that connection is that you have friendships and that you have people in your life. So how can you look at it differently to try and problem solve? So go back to that, what matters and then help your child be a problem solver, which that's something that matters. I mean, it, it, and when we go to school, one of the biggest things we're working on is how to problem solve. You're not going to have the same exact problems, but as you get older, you're going to have to be able to think through and problem solve. So help, why not help them with that? What can we do? You know, my niece just had her birthday and she did a birthday party with her friends online and they played bingo. And she, my sister sent all her friends these bingo cards that were electronic. And then she called the numbers and they talked and then people won. And it was super fun. And as they were doing the birthday party, my sister said she was getting texts from all the moms. Oh, my child loves this. They needed this. Yeah. Well, they needed that connection. But, you know, what a great way to think outside the box to say, here's what matters. Here's what I can still do for it to be similar enough to still get what matters. Oh, that is so powerful, Carol, because when you said problem solving, it was like a hundred lights went off inside of my head because I think you really put your finger on something that is one of those overarching goals of education yeah. that we often don't talk about. I'm thinking I'm educational psychologist. Yeah, maybe in my own thinking and a lot of my research has been about problem solving and yet we often miss that in the midst of our educational days or in our parent child relationships, because for parents to be strong at home with their children, teaching them to solve problems and even involving them in the problems that confront them at home on a daily basis. What better way to develop our children to become strong, Adults. Yes. It really, I, it, I mean, that really strikes a chord for me that often in the heat of the battle, as a mom of five children, I can say I often at home was not thinking about teaching my children to be problem solvers. It was all I could do to hang on for dear life trying <laughs> to solve the problem myself, you know. Right. Well, and sometimes we are doing it through example. I mean, that's, that's really powerful too. We're doing it by example, but if you could involve your child in the process of, well, what can we do? Even if you have ideas to wait and let them try and figure it out a little bit too is, can be really powerful or together to try and brainstorm and to think outside the box. You know, there's this fine balance of wanting to validate how they're feeling, but you don't want to spend that much time on that. And you might think, well, how is a counselor saying this? Sure. Right? Counselor should be say, talk about your feelings all the time. But really, you know, validate the feeling, of course, but then move on to being a problem solver. What can we do to do the best we can with the situation that we're giving? And that's where you're teaching that flexibility. And I think problem solving is, is huge skill, but also flexibility. Um, I've found that people who are not flexible end up being really unhappy. You know, they're not able to go with it and to move through it. Well, I just, I popped that up. I'm still learning the technology. I, one thing before we finished the session on flexibility that we both 
felt was really important. And uh, several sessions ago, Doug Mapp and I talked about resilience and the brain. And I was so excited to see this beautiful slide pop up on that. So before we end, and we will end here shortly, I didn't want to conclude without talking a little bit about resilience, because in reality, problem solvers, I could say one of their characteristics is being resilient. So yeah. talk to us a little bit about this beautiful slide that we have up here. Well, yeah, I love this slide because it, it talks about all the different components that kind of go into being resilient. But one of, some of the ones I love the most is the flexibility, like we spoke about. But I really like the empathy and connection. I think if you are to be flexible, especially in the current situation that we're in, you have to understand that decisions are being made for lots of different people, right? And so you have to understand to put yourself in other people's shoes and understand where we're coming from, that it's not just about you, that decisions are being made for everyone. So fostering empathy within your children, I think, is another super duper important. So flexibility, problem solving skills, empathy and connection are super important. And I, I'm an optimist myself. I think it's really important to stay as positive as possible. You know, if you could keep a gratitude journal or anything like that to really stay positive, even if it's the smallest thing, like I've got a hot coffee this morning, <laughs> that, you know, to, to be optimistic and to also always have hope and, and for the future and stuff is really important. So those are all really important things to foster resiliency within your child. And I think during this time, more so than ever, we really just need to be resilient and flexible. Yeah. And, and we discovered that the definition of resilient was really to to become healthy and strong and productive and successful. And part of that key to that definition was in a and they use the word actually bad situation. Yeah. So we're problem solving. That's helping us to be resilient. Also in, in your little white bubble at the bottom is one of my very favorite uh, concepts is powerful of self-efficacy. Yes. So in being knowing that we have the ability to do what we're called to do. And so I want to end on that the thought there's just too much more to talk about Carol. we're gonna to have to find ways to talk about this topic uh, additionally um but to know that you are in control that you every parent and and friend that is watching strong at home that you can find ways to find flexibility in your day and that will translate into resilience and resilience will bring you to a place where you will be strong at home and i think that translates into strong anywhere that you are for you and for your children and with that i'd like to end our strong at home session today that the Lord would bless you and keep you, that the Lord would make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you so much, Carol, for being here yeah. today and peace to you. We'll talk to you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.